All right, let's pray and ask the Lord to bless them. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity we have to study the Word of God. We thank you, Lord, for the great uh, chapter of Psalm fifty, number uh, Psalm fifty-one, and the great um, and uh, important uh, teaching on repentance uh, in all the Bible. And so we thank you, God, for this great uh, blessing from your word. I pray that we would uh, certainly examine our hearts in relationship to sin and learn to repent of sin and confess sin and forsake it, Lord, for your honor and glory and renewal in our lives and restoration in our lives, Lord. And we ask that you bless us because of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And a Men. So, gaya ng pinag-usapan natin last week, um, ipagpapatuloy natin ang Psalm number 51. We're going to continue now in Psalm number 51. Uh, last week, we talked about the historical background to Psalm number 51, considering, of course, Nathan the prophet confronting <clears throat> David the king. And uh, um, David repents and turns uh, as a result of Nathan's faithful confrontation. Uh, and uh, every time a person truly repents, it brings about forgiveness and renewal. So the path for the Christian is a, uh, an entire life of repentance. Okay? And the Christian life is a life, a, a huge life of repentance and renewal and restoration. Uh, there can be no salvation without repentance. <clears throat> and uh, nobody comes to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ without truly turning from sin or turning from false teaching, turning from uh, uh, self-reliance. Um, turning from um, uh, 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 sin and self. And uh, then when a person repents and trusts in the Lord and call upon the name of the Lord, believe on him, on the Lord Jesus Christ, that person is born again and saved. <clears throat> but that is not the end of repentance. The Christian... Uh, learns to repent over and over again, needs to learn to repent over and over again for subsequent sins. We repent as Christians not for salvation, but we repent as Christians for cleansing and again, sanctification. And that's what the heart of this psalm, we saw the, we'll look at the, um, the outline again. We're going to review the outline. But the heart of this psalm is verses number 7 and 12. David's prayer for cleansing. We'll look at these um, divisions here. So Psalm number 51 begins with, To the chief musician, a psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet came unto him after he had gone into Bathsheba. We looked at that last week. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. So David repents, and in his repentance, he appeals to Jehovah God. Uh, for his loving kindness and tender mercies. Um, the reason why David had faith that God would for, would cleanse him, would forgive him, is the is because of the basis of God's loving kindness and tender mercies. God is faithful and just to forgive us. Because he is faithful to his promise. 
His loving kindness is tied to his covenant. God is in covenant relationship with Israel as a nation. And David, of course, was king. And so David appeals to God's faithfulness. God, you are the faithful God. You are Jehovah, the covenant-keeping, self, um, self-existing God, eternally self-existing God that you are a covenant-keeping God. And I am, I fail, I've sinned, I have sinned, and I'm appealing to your faithfulness for my cleansing and for my forgiveness. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. Why does God forgive the sinner? Does he forgive us because we are so smart? Does he forgive us because we're so nice? Does he forgive us because we're just good people? No, he doesn't. He doesn't forgive us because we do good and we perform good or we're nice and good people. No, he doesn't forgive us because of our performance. His his forgiveness is rooted in his loving kindness and tender mercies. He forgives us because of Jesus. As born again New Testament Christians. Now David, uh, he wasn't born again, but David was a believer. He he saved. And uh, based upon his faith in the Lord and in his Messiah, in the Lord's Messiah, the anointed one, David knew that God uh, would be faithful to his promise. And so he appeals to God's loving kindness. So this is why we know we believe in eternal security. This is why we know that once a person is born again and saved, they are saved forever. It's because God is faithful to his loving kindness and tender mercies. I'm so glad that God doesn't judge me according to my works. Because if he judged us according to our uh, our excellence and our merits, we would all fail. We would all we would we're all sinners, and we would fail. But God forgives us because of His loving kindness, His tender mercies. So when you repent of sin and you're asking God to cleanse you, remember the loving kindness of God and his tender mercies. Remember, he sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. And Jesus is the basis. He is the reason. He is the purpose why God could forgive us because all of our sins were placed on Jesus. And God judged him in our stead, in our place. And so really faith and, and faith in Jesus is the secret. And that's the key. Uh, and that's the, the basis, his blood. The blood of Jesus is the, the reason why he forgives us of our sin. He doesn't forgive us because of us. He doesn't forgive us because we, we belong to a church or we, we're, we practice certain religious things. No way. Uh, the merit of our forgiveness is the blood of Christ, the sacrifice of Christ. And uh, we believe in him, and then he applies that to us, the, the, the forgiveness that we so need, that we, we do not deserve. That's the mercy of God. All right? Notice that when David repents, um, David <clears throat> mentions his sins, plural. He mentions his sins. He doesn't hide his sins. He doesn't excuse his sin. He names them and he identifies them. In verse number uh, uh, one, my transgressions, my transgressions, plural. Transgressions is to go beyond. Uh, God said, stop, don't do that. And David goes beyond. Uh, Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity. Iniquity is doing evil, doing evil. Hmm. Cleanse me from my sin. 
sin. So transgression, transgressions, iniquity, sin, sin. Three terms that David used to identify his personal sin against the Lord. And uh, so when a person truly repents, they name their sin. They don't say it's a mistake. They don't say, oh, it's a moral failure. They don't say, oh, you know, it was circumstantial. They don't say, well, you know, if I offend you, you know, that's not what they say. They say, here's my sin. Here's my iniquity. Here's my transgression. David stands against sin, not against being caught, not against the, the consequences of sin, but the root problem, the sin itself becomes odious and offensive to a repentant David. And that's true repentance. That's true repentance. Many people repent because of the consequences of sin. Many people repent because they get caught in sin, but they never repent of the sin. And this is the difference. True repentance marks the root cause, the sin itself. Hmm. All right, so that's the first section. David prays for personal restoration, verses 1 and 2. Now we move to the next section, uh, David's repentance, his contrition, his confession of sin in verses 3 to 6. So let's look at 3 and 6, 3 to 6 here. Psalm 51, 3 and 6. For I acknowledge my transgressions. My sin is ever before me. You see, a Christian's guilt and shame will always be in front of him until he repents, until he seeks the Lord's forgiveness. So you're not right with God if you're practicing sin, if you're still in your sin and you haven't repudiated your sin, if you're still in secret delighting in sin. Mm, that is not true repentance. Uh, verse 4, against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest justif be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. David acknowledges that his sin is directly, directly offensive to God Almighty. Now, <clears throat> David sinned against Bathsheba. David sinned against Uriah. David sinned against uh, the nation of Israel. David sinned against his own house. David sinned against his own soul, his own self. Mm -hmm. But more than all of that, David really sinned against the Lord, just like we all sin against the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so when we sin, we affect a lot of things. We elect, affect a lot of people. But the most, the most uh, important person that we offend when we sin is God Almighty. <clears throat> and there's a need to approach the Lord in Jesus' name, asking for cleansing and forgiveness. And David acknowledged that. Verse number five, behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. This is why we, we believe that even babies are born uh, in sin and babies are sinful in nature. So the cutest baby is a sinner in the, uh, in the eyes of the Lord, not by choice because they don't have that ability yet, but by nature. You don't have to teach a little child to sin. They're just going to sin naturally because that's how, that's how we are. We're all born in sin. <clears throat> Verse number six, behold, thou desirest truth. In the inward parts, where does God want to see repentance? Where does he look for it? Does he look for it on the exterior, on the outside? No. God looks for repentance in the heart. Verse 6. In the inward parts, in the hidden part, shalt thou make me to know wisdom. Hmm. So <clears throat> a repentant person is someone who is repentant in their heart. Not in the outside tears. 
Repentance is not a, a, the exterior. It is the heart. And then eventually you'll see it on the outside. Of course, it'll make a big difference. When your heart is truly repentant, your life will soon demonstrate that. But if you start on the exterior, that's just behaviorism. You're just changing your behavior. There's no true repentance. That behavior change will not last. It will not make a, a much of a difference. But true repentance is uh, not, a, not an exterior change, but a heart change that will result into an exterior change, a long-lasting exterior change. <clears throat> so uh, now we find David's uh, repentance and contrition and confession. Now, what are the results of it? We find that in this section, 1317. Uh, but let's look at the heart of this Psalm 51. What's the main, uh, what, what does repentance, um, what's the point of repenting? Uh, it's for cleansing. Look at verse number 7 and 12, this next section, 7 to 12. Purge me with hyssop. Hyssop is a, a, is a plant that they use to put dip it in water and sprinkle. Ceremonial plant for cleansing. The idea is David wants to be clean. David felt dirty. On the heart, on the inside, he felt so dirty, he wanted to be clean. That's exactly how a Christian is when a Christian truly repents. They feel dirty. They want cleansing. They're seeking God for cleansing. And this is what we need as Christians. When we sin against the Lord, we don't ask God to save us again and to make us born again over and over again. We don't need salvation once you get saved. You're always going to be saved. But what we need as Christians when we sin is cleansing over and over and over again. Every time we sin against the Lord, we ought to go to God in prayer asking for cleansing, mercy and forgiveness and cleansing. It's called sanctification. We need sanctification every day. We need sanctification every moment of every day. And so it's not, we should be going to God with, with these verses here. Make me to hear joy and gladness. Oh, wait, wait. <clears throat> Purge me with hyssop, I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. David wants cleanliness and purity of heart. Make me to hear joy and gladness at the bones which thou hast broken me rejoice. You know, God's judgment on sin sometimes has health implications. And repentance is a restoration of joy. One of the blessings of repentance is its fruit. When you truly repent, that's when God renews and restores the joy. You want a fresh start? Then repent of sin. If you want renewal, you need repentance. Hmm. Verse number nine, hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart. You see that? Cleansing. Clean heart. Christian, do you want a clean heart? Then repent and ask God for his loving kindness and tender mercies. Confess sin and forsake sin, and God will give you a clean heart. <clears throat> oh God, renew a right spirit within me, a right spirit. Uh, there are wounded spirits. That's not what God wants for you. There are angry spirits. There, that's not what God wants for you. There's backslidden spirits. There's bitter spirits. Hmm? God doesn't want that for you. He wants to uh, give you a renewed spirit, a right spirit. So you want a right spirit in your heart? Uh, you want a right spirit in your life? Repent of sin. Confess and forsake those sins. Go to God. And God, if you truly repent, God will, God will uh, renew a right spirit within you. Hmm. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, and again, it's, uh, it's the inward part God's interested in. Verse number 11, cast me not away from thy presence. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. The first time the, the name Holy Spirit shows up in the book of Psalms is Psalm 51. And, uh, and again, a Christian that truly repents of sin is restored by the Holy Spirit of God. The work of sanctification is the work of the Holy Spirit of God. He's the one who revives. He's the one who renews. The Spirit is the one who uh, um, uh, 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 restores. So if you want a right spirit, then repent. Because repentance brings restoration. Repentance restores, renews a right spirit. How is your spirit? How is your heart? Is your heart not right with God? If it's not right, if your spirit is not renewed, ah, then uh, it, it could be a bitter spirit. It could be an angry spirit. It could be a, a, a backslidden spirit. And God doesn't desire that type of spirit to rule over your life. That is a, a sin-laden spirit. Oh my, it's time to repent. And it's time to ask God for cleansing and renewal. And this is the work of the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, take not thy spirit from me. Hmm. Now, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit is it, uh, it comes upon a leader and departs from the leader, uh, comes upon a prophet and departs at times. And uh, uh, But in the New Testament, when a Christian, when a person is born again by the Spirit, in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit of God lives inside of the Christian. But if you're not careful, sin will eclipse the presence of the Holy Spirit in your heart. The presence of sin, the corruption power of sin, will make it seem like the Holy Spirit's not there, although he is there. Essentially, biblically speaking, theologically speaking, the Spirit resides in the body, the temple of the Holy Ghost. He is there. But if you are given over to sin, it hides. Sin spoils the work of the Spirit, the sanctifying work of the Spirit, spoiled by sin. This is why we need repentance and renewal and restoration. Verse 12, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. You know, one of the greatest things that ever happened to a believer is their salvation. When you think about the, the salvation that, that you experience, when you, when you remember how you were born again, when you think about the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross, for your sin hmm. and what you truly deserve and how you're supposed to die and go to hell and be cast into the lake of fire because of the holiness of God and the wrath of God against sin. It, When you think of salvation, it ought to be the greatest news in your life. It is the greatest news in your life. But if you're in sin, you will think very poorly you, will, you won't even remember that. You were bought by the blood of Christ. Ooh. Uh, you'll, you'll go to church singing songs that don't matter to you. Hmm. This is not good. The, 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 restore, the restoration work begins with repentance, true repentance. Uphold with it uh, uh, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Here's another name for the Holy Spirit. He's the Holy Spirit in verse number, uh, let's see here, in verse number 11. He is the free spirit in verse number 12. So again, repentance brings restoration. 
renewal and cleansing. And so the heart of this psalm is verses 7 to 12. Now, what are the results? What happens when a Christian truly repents? Well, like in David's case, David, again, David is a believer. He repents of sin. He goes to the Lord, appeals to God's loving kindness, and he asks God for forgiveness. What are the fruits of this? What are the results? Here's the next section, verses 13 to 17. The results of repentance. So let's look at verses 13 to 17. When a, when a believer repents and God forgives and God restores, look at the usefulness. Verse number 13. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Hmm. There's going to be some people that will come to know the Lord as Savior because you repented and got right with God and told them about how good God is and how wonderful salvation is. Without repentance, there is no usefulness. A Christian who doesn't repent cannot be used by God. But then again, on the other hand, a Christian who truly repents and is refreshed and is restored and is renewed, oh, that's a, a wonderful witness to the loving kindness and tender mercies of God. They speak of that wonderful relationship with the Lord. Deliver me from blood guiltiness. Well, David understood uh, he sinned against Uriah. Remember, he caused Uriah to get drunk. So drinking is sin. And causing others to get drunk is sin too. And then he was the, he deceived, he deceived Uriah. That's lying. He broke that law. And then he murdered him. He was the root reason why Uriah was killed. That's blood guiltiness. And that's what David's talking about here. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God. Thou God of my salvation and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. Oh, they're singing. A renewed spirit, a renewed heart. One who truly repents is renewed. They are a faithful witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Then they sing. They, are, they have a heart that sings unto the Lord freely. Sing unto the Lord with joy in their heart. Singing is a sign of joy. You know, if a person wakes up in the morning and they're singing, they have a song in their heart, that's because they're, they're happy. And uh, a Christian who, who repents and is renewed, is a happy Christian, they will sing with, with integrity of heart. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> verse number 15, O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth will show forth thy praise. Oh, they not just sing, but now they're ready to testify and praise the Lord. You see, their lips are full of praise to God and thankfulness to God. Uh, they they talk about the Lord and how good God is and how God intervened and how God did this and God did that. Their, their focus is not on the problem, but they focus on the praise of the Lord. That's a fruits of repentance, results of repentance. Mm -hmm. uh, verse 16, for thou desirest not sacrifice, else I would give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. That's true repentance. Here's a biblical definition of repentance. Broken spirit mm, towards sin and towards the Lord. Turning from sin to the Savior, to God. Mm. Uh, a broken and contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Contrite means with... Um, with uh, uh, being crushed with sorrow, contrite with sorrow. <clears throat> but God does not despise a repentant believer. You see, the, the, the very, very precious psalm this is, teaching us about these things. We need this as believers. All right, and then so finally we have the last section here. A prayer for national restoration. So there's personal restoration. 
Now it parallels to national restoration of the last two verses. And again, uh, David was king, king over Israel. He personally re repents and is renewed. And now he's asking God as the king, he prays for God's forgiveness for the nation of Israel. There's, then he expects national restoration. Let's look at verse 18 and 19. Uh, Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Wow. What a dream to have a leader who really cares for his people and prays for his people. I don't think we've seen that. I have never seen a king, a president, a governor, a leader who truly repents and believes in Jehovah God and truly cares for the people spiritually. No, no, no. The kings of the earth, they set themselves against the Lord, the Bible says. They don't like God. The kings of the earth think that God is not essential. Just think about that. If you're a believer, if you know the Lord is your savior, remember governing officials, I have not seen this, this kind of repentance from a national governing official. And I don't believe I'll ever see that here on this side of eternity until Jesus returns and <laughs> sits on the throne of David. That's why, you know, people are rejoicing about the new president or new this and that or this and that. <clears throat> well, my hope is in the Lord, not in man because man will disappoint you every time. Hmm. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem, David prayed for his people. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offerings and the whole burnt offering, and then thou shalt offer bullocks upon thine altar. God will be pleased with his people someday. And David prays to that end, that, that God would uh, restore and renew Jerusalem. Well, that prayer will be answered someday. It won't be answered any time here on, uh, now. <clears throat> but when Jesus returns and rules and reigns in Jerusalem and occupies the throne of David, he'll resurrect David. David will rule and reign again under Jesus. <clears throat> and uh, uh, that's when David's prayers will be answered concerning national restoration of Israel. Currently, Israel is apostate. Uh, the, but the church doesn't replace or uh, 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 supersede Israel. No, God has a plan and a purpose for New Testament church. God has a plan and a purpose for national ethnic Israel. And uh, God will be glorified. In all of that, he will be glorified someday. <clears throat> Our hope as believers today is not in an elected politician. Uh, our hope, thankfully, thank the Lord for that. Our hope is not in man. Our hope is in the Lord because Jesus never fails. Mm. So uh, let's pray and ask God to bless them. And I appreciate you tuning in. Next week, we're going to look at Psalm 52. And Psalm 52 uh, has uh, um, everything to do with uh, mm, uh, David and uh, his enemy, Doeg. We'll talk about that uh, next week, next Wednesday. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. We thank you for the gift of repentance. We thank you that we can certainly acknowledge our sin and turn to you and appeal to your loving kindness because of Jesus. And so, Lord, I pray that we would examine our hearts and examine our spirits and use true repentance as your means of renewing and restoring and refreshing and reviving the spirit. And so, Lord, I pray that you'd use this word in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.